because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up, Harry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. Razaban IFL TV proudly sponsored by Everlast. Delighted to have with me Lewis Edmondson. Lewis, hey. how are we doing, mate? You got fans already here in Bournemouth. What's going on? <laughs> That's it, we're nice and local. Um, but yeah, I'm all good. Thank you, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Thanks for asking. Um, how have the last few days been so far since you've been out here? It's been very good. Uh, obviously, I'm nice and local to home. Um, it's like being at home, to be honest. I know Bournemouth very well. We used to uh, spend days down here in the summer. And, um, Sparring? Yeah, yeah, nah, there's no one around here really for me, you know. Um, <laughs> not really many people around here, but um, yeah, not very well. It's just like being at home for me, really. It's nice. Let's talk a little about your obviously last couple of years. Um, lack of fights, lack of yeah. your fans being able to see you in the ring. I think it's what, three fights? This is, well, I think this Saturday is going to be your third fight in, in almost three years. What's, what's that kind of down yeah. to? Uh, I had a really bad injury. Um, well, I say an injury, it's, it was not an injury so to speak I had a um, it looks like I've been bit by a shark to be honest I had like five operations across my ass um, that um, the hospitals was telling me that the, the hospital was the first ever patient they give up on um, I had septicemia twice nearly killed me twice um, they couldn't fix me they give up on me I was the first patient he's ever given, given up on so basically it was through that really I was fighting the last couple of fights um, with an open wound, they couldn't heal the wound. I'm on antibiotics for like two years straight. Um, it was a nightmare to be honest. And then thankfully, I uh, managed to. They sent an email out to all the surgeons um, across the UK and seeing if anybody fancies taking on the job to fix me, basically. Um, somebody, a guy in uh, Birmingham, Garth Titley, um, teamed up with another surgeon who they don't normally team up together with. Um, they teamed up together and took on the job, and it was a very dangerous job. Um, and they managed to fix me that to do skin grafts and stuff like that. They've had to cut, yeah, this looks a bit of a mess to be honest. But um, I'm happy to get that over with now. I'm off the antibiotics, I haven't got no more open wounds, got no more risk of sepsis. And it kind of got to the point with that situation, I was getting sepsis, so I was in the hospital for a very long time. And boxing was kind of put to the back of my mind because I nearly lost my life a couple of times. So. It got to the point with never mind boxing, I need to get myself fixed. I was in Al Smith gym at the eye box um, for a bit, and I was sort of coming in the gym, and I was telling me, Look, mate, like this ain't right, Lou. Like, you, you need to get healed, mate. You can't be worrying about training and stuff. Like, genuinely, you need to get yourself fixed because it could potentially kill you, mate. You know, so I took a time, a little time away from boxing, managed to find the right surgeons, and yeah, got healed. So that's basically why I was a little bit in inactive, to be honest. Wow, okay. Yeah. Well, I, I was expecting I, that one, but it, you wasn't expecting it, was you? But yeah, I'll show you the scars later. I mean, I know what exactly sepsis and septicemia is. Yeah. I know exactly what that is, but you said you were bitten by a shark. It looks like I've been bitten by a shark. But where did that wound come from? How did that wound Basically, happen? It started off like a little cyst, um, like a little lump. So then I've obviously gone to the hospital. Uh, they've cut it out, packed it for however long, come back, they cut it out again. Then they done an operation that was a 99% success rate, like 60 stitches or whatever. So um, they kind of, that didn't heal it either. So at that point, that's when they started to panic and started to worry. And I'm going to the doctors, I'm going to the hospital and it's a bit of a weird, um, a bit of a weird like disease it is kind of like they don't when I saw the specialist they told me they don't really know where it comes from. They don't know whether you're born with it. They don't know whether you develop it later on in life. It's kind of, they know roughly how to fix it, but it's, it's just one of them things. And even the specialist that fixes all the people that can't get fixed, he's telling me it's the worst one he's ever seen. So it was a little bit unlucky, really, but um, I'm happy, I'm healthy now, and I'm ready to uh, make a big, big noise on the scene, you know? Well, yeah, wow, that's an incredible story, um, Lewis, and I'm just glad to see you back in the ring after that. Um, so is this fight on Saturday night? about getting out, get those cobwebs off you and before you, you start stepping up? It's an obviously I fought in December um, against a good durable opponent that um, doesn't really get stopped. Um, stopped him, got him out of there. Then there's a little bit of back and forth trying to get me out and um, 
sorting things out. But yeah, we managed to get me out now. Obviously, we've got a good opponent um, in Peter Nozick, 8 and 1. So um, yeah, I'm ready to be busy and I want the big fights, I want the big nights, and I'm coming for it all. So this year, it's about get Peter out of the way on, on Saturday. Yeah. And then it's just about Lewis needs to be active in 2023. That's it. I just want to be busy. I just want to be busy doing what I love, doing what I was born to do, and um, be busy as possible. And yeah, I want the big nights, the big fights, and I'm coming for it. Pete Anosik, I think he 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 fought Ben Whitaker back in yeah. Saudi on the Joshua Usyk undercard. Um, he took Ben Whitaker uh, the full the full distance yeah. as well. I think Ben won on points. So. Um, Ben's freshly started as well. I know he's had a great amateur career, but he's not, in terms of fights, he's only had, what, three fights? Yourself as well. I know you, you've only had not that many fights yeah. as well. So is Ben Whitaker a potential opponent for you down the line? Definitely. Like, I believe that fight will 100% happen. Obviously, yeah, he fought Peter Nozick and went points. I think he might have even drew a round against him. Uh, I believe that they fought in the WSB as well as amateurs. Um, but that is a fight I believe that will happen and that is a fight that I do want. Obviously, I respect everything that Ben's done. He's an Olympic silver medalist. You don't get given them. Like, I mean, they're very, very, very... I respect it a lot. But at the same time, I believe I'll beat him and that's the fight I definitely want, whether it be this year, whether it be next year. But I want that fight. What do you make him as a fighter? Obviously, there's a lot of hype around him and Sky are really pushing him. Great ring walks. He's flashy. He dances in the ring. He dances within punches as well. Um, uh, has he showed you more than someone like me? You know, you're an actual fighter. Have you seen more to his arson? It's an offing come. When he's uh, showboating uh, against all these journeymen and he's doing all this and that, I find it very disrespectful. You know, we need them journeymen in the sport. And... Um, they help build fighters like ourselves, you know, so I think it's very disrespectful and I don't like really the way he goes about things. Um, yeah, he's a good fighter, he's a good fighter. Um, I don't want to say too much on what I think about him, but I think he's a good fighter and um, that's definitely a fight I would like and it's a definitely a fight I'll win. In terms of your promotional situation, where are we with that? Obviously, um, going to fight on the Sky Show, Boxer yeah. Show on Saturday, but where are you? Are you still in the open market and able to work with everybody? Um, I am, yeah, at the minute, but um, I do believe we're going to be moving forward with Boxer and um, with a couple of fights um, moving forward. We've got a couple of fights with Boxer and we'll see where we go from there. But um, yeah, I'm like, very happy to be part of this show that they put on the South Coast. Um, they've treated me well. Um, yeah, it's been very good so far and I'm, I can't wait to move forward. And still working with Billy Joe Saunders as your um, official manager as well? Yeah, Billy Joe's my manager. He, um very good friend and manager and he uh, guides me every step of the way and um, yeah I've got a great team around me Outside of, of Ben Whitaker who else do you kind of rate in the UK with, in that light heavyweight division I know obviously we saw Anthony Yard take on Baturbia um, we saw Boazzi who's with Boxer as well yeah. fight not long ago um, but who, Dan Aziz doing very well European champion as well so who, who do you rate and do you think in a couple of more fights and you'll be ready for them guys as well Listen obviously I don't like when I sit here, you know, like certain people are doing and calling out all these people, and they're that they're that step above. I mean, they're British, European, Commonwealth. They're moving on to world titles and world honours. So don't get me wrong. Like that's the thing I do want, and that's where I'm destined. But for right now, it's not realistic for me to be calling out them them guys and and shouting for them because just look like a bit of an idiot. You know, don't get me wrong. I know I'm good enough to be in the mix. But everything's about timing, you know. They, these are older fellas and they're moving on and we'll get there and we probably will clash at some point, but it's not right now. Um, just moving back to Billy Joe, do you want to see him back in the ring sometime this year? Of course, of course I do. I believe he will. I 100% believe he will be fighting, but obviously I can't speak for the man and I'm not 100% sure as I can't speak for him, you know, but I think he'll be back and I, I really want to see it. 15,000 fans packed at that football, Vitaly Football Stadium on Saturday. Not far from your, as you said, your hometown as well. So I'm sure you're going to bring some noise and, and some fans. But um, surely you're, you're super excited. I cannot wait, you know, to be part of a great show, the biggest show that's ever been on the South Coast. And I'm just happy to be part of it. And um, I can't wait, you know. We've got great support coming up from Southampton. I believe there'll be five, 600 coming up. And uh, they'll be making some noise, as they always do. And um, yeah, it's nice and local. It's, uh, I'm happy to be part of it. I'm happy to be here. And on Saturday night, I'm going to show why I deserve to be here. 
And finally, quick prediction on the main event. Uh, Lawrence Coley takes on Chris Billum smith um, In the weight above you, cru- the cruiserweight division. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know the history between obviously Lawrence yeah. and, and, and Chris and, and Shane, but from what you've seen this week and you've been around the boys, um, how do you think that fight plays out? For me, obviously, they're both going to feel like they can win. They both feel like they've obviously got a lot to prove. I feel like the crowds may help Chris Billum smith may push him on that, give him that extra little bit of fight. But I mean, Lawrence Coley, man, he's he's big, he's strong, he's tricky, he's clever, and he don't be world champion without anything. So, listen, this I'm gonna sit on the fence for this one. <laughs> you can't do <laughs> that. After all that, you're gonna sit on the fence. I'm a fence sitter, but if I got to go prediction, I'm going to Coley. Stoppage or points? I'm not sure. I'm just a Coley win. I'll take that, I'll take that. Lewis, appreciate giving me uh, eight, nine minutes of your time. Um, you're in the vest and it is getting a little bit nippy out here and I don't want you to, you know, no, Greg Marriott sure. start complaining. It's, uh, it's one of them, it's <laughs> one of them. It's, it's, I'm, I'm, Rob, Bill's rubbing off on me, isn't he? It's the, the gypsy vibe rubber, rubbing off on me, but um, <laughs> we're all good, we're all good. Yeah, wish you all the best. Uh, Saturday night, only 48 hours away and yeah, we'll catch up with you tomorrow at the weigh-in. Nice one, thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Lewis Edmondson for IFL TV, thank you very much. Much. Because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up, Harry. And it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We need their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day.